Bird on Bars fans, Breeze Nation, what is good? Question on the table today. What is the Chicago Bears' best option at the wide receiver position heading into 2023? Let's talk about it, starting now. Now, if you are new to the channel, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, man, because we do talk Chicago sports daily. Even if you've been here, please hit the like button. It does help the channel. But let me know in the comments below what you believe the Chicago Bears' best option at wide receiver is in 2023. Because there's a couple of different ways this, things can, this thing can really go, right? Like, when you really start to look at this team and, and where this team is, right, um, we have some confidence that there's some players here that you think can make some plays, in my opinion anyway, right? Like, I feel like Chase Claypool is going to still be a really good piece for the Chicago Bears. I think he's just learning his offense, right? I know people p expected him to come in and set the world on fire, um, but apparently, right, this offense is just that different because we're still seeing this far in. What, what's he been here, four weeks, five weeks now? Um Justin Fields have to tell him where to line up. Justin Fields have to tell him, you know, kind of where he needs to be on the field and what what he needs to uh, – and, and, and just really not getting the targets either, right? Like, I think that's the interesting thing as well. We haven't seen Justin targeting Claypool a lot. He's still going with his comfort zone, still going to commit a lot, going to Equinamia St. Brown, different things like that. But at the end of the day, right, what is the Bears' best option in 2023 to add to that, right? Because even if you feel like like me, right, like the Chase Claypool is going to be a nice receiver for the Chicago Bears, you still want to see YA, right? You, you want to be able to cover yourself. You, you want to be able to go out there and uh, have some assurance that you have some wide receiver help going into 2023. And there's a couple different ways the Bears could go about this, right? The first way for me uh, is addressing it through the draft, right? Now, the the one thing for me is that uh, I don't want to want to see the Bears uh, just force offense, right? I want to see the Bears go best player available because of how many needs they have. But I could see the Bears trading back and acquiring a couple of more picks. Uh, that Detroit spot looks really interesting, right? Because even though Golf is playing well, it still seems like they kind of want another quarterback in there. Um somebody who you can count on a little bit so maybe they'd be willing to be a trade partner which would be really interesting wouldn't it um i i doubt they would but maybe right like they 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 traded uh, uh hawkinson to minnesota so maybe i don't know but if you were going to look in the draft right uh the guy that i'd be looking at is quentin johnson uh out of tcu now here's the thing i don't watch much college football y'all know this about me right I watched Jackson State this year. Shout out Deion Sanders. But outside of that, right, like I wasn't like deep diving, breaking down players every week. But I actually got a chance to watch TCU this year a couple of times. And I got the opportunity to see Quentin Johnston on the, Johnston on the field. And especially in that Kansas State game, even though they do end up losing, shout out Matt Duggan, heck of a player over there, by the way. He was such a beast in limited spurts because he only got, I believe, four receptions in that game, but 139 yards, scored a touchdown, right? You knew what kind of play he was, and that's kind of what his season has been uh, this season, right? They haven't gone to him a ton of time. Now, I did, I did want to see, right, I could only see the receptions. I couldn't see the catch completion for each individual one. So I would like to see kind of how his targets were. Um, but you see him coming away with three, four reception at a time. But the part that stands out to you is that when he finally does get more than three or four receptions, right, he has massive games. He had a game with eight receptions. All of a sudden, he's got 149 yards, right? He had a game with 14 receptions. He got over a 200-yard receiving game, right? He's been an interesting guy. He had five he has five touchdowns on the year. 6'4, 215. He's got a 4'4 40 time at the moment. A 42-inch vertical. 
He's a guy that if you're going to go in the draft, right, he's slated right now to go around that second round spot that I would be interested in looking at. I think he's more of an upside player, right? You've seen the talent in there, but you haven't seen, right, the the amazing, consistent game. I think that also plays into a little bit of TCU's offense as well. Um He's had his ups and downs, but to me, right, he's somebody that if you did make cut, bring him in here and he's your number one guy, right, he's still 17 yards of reception every time he gets the ball. He finally gives Justin that deep route, that 6'4 body you can go to on those consistent deep routes, right? I think he adds a little bit standing opposite of Claypool if you add him into this offense. Now you've got a couple of big bodies there, and you've got Cole Komet coming over the middle, right, a couple of legit receivers there uh, for the Bears, and and you get you got to bring Quentin Johnston up to speed, but if you're going to go in the draft, right, I think he'd be the player I'd look at. We do still have that second-round pick from Baltimore. If we could trade back, if we have three, and maybe Ryan Poles doesn't want to sit there, we could trade back in that situation, acquire a couple of more picks. Maybe you get a higher second-round pick, and you're able to go after a guy like Quentin Johnston. I don't know exactly where in the second he's slated to go, right? We're still pretty early on, but it, it seems pretty consistent based on the research that I've done that people think he's going to be a second-round pick, probably because, like I said, right, like he's got the measurables, he's got the speed, he's got everything there but there's a bunch of games where it's just three receptions two receptions right and I guess that opens up a lot of question marks for you as well but also right like it could just be TCU's offense right they like to spread the ball around uh Matt Duggan doing a great job getting getting everybody involved in the game uh and when they've had to focus on him he's been able to step up now I do want to know how you guys feel man let me know in the comments below what do you think the Bears should do at the wide receiver position going into the next season I'll be down there talking with you as well uh, now, there are a couple of more options for the Chicago Bears if they didn't want to go uh, uh, with a um, in the draft, right? If they if they didn't want to look to the draft for this one, right? If they wanted to look elsewhere, if they wanted to look in the league, get an established guy already. So what's your options there? All right, let's have this conversation. Uh, get the guy before the contract is up. We saw that a couple of times this year where there were some contract disputes. There were, there were guys that were... Uh, looking to get out of the situation that they were in or just were moved because the team didn't feel like they were going to be able to give that guy the contract that he was going to want, right? I think we saw that a little bit with A.J. Brown. Um, the one guy for me that I'd be eyeballing heavily, heavily, uh, if you could, right, uh, is T. Higgins. T. Higgins to me, now, not to say that this is a guarantee that he's going to be available, right? Like, the Bengals might be like, no, he's our he's our definite number one and a half because you can't even really call him a number two. Uh, we're not moving on from him. We're going to give him whatever contract he wants. But a lot of times, right, you know you're going to pay Jamar Chase. You know he's going to get that big money deal. Do you want to give that deal to T. Higgins in that situation? That's kind of the question mark there. But Higgins has been a monster yet again. He just hasn't been the number one all season. And when he was the number one, he was producing as as a number one, right? So he's a guy that still coming away with six, seven receptions a game, right? Joe Burrow does a great job putting the ball in his hands, but when you're not the focal point of the offense, you're not ending up in the end zone nearly as much. So only five touchdowns on the season, not to say that's bad, right? Really, really good season. Um, but what you would expect from a number two guy in that level of offense, right? And, and or I should say a 1A guy. But you know what T. Higgins brings, big body, able to go up there and get it. I think that he's somebody that the Bears could absolutely utilize on the other side of uh, 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 Chase Claypool, right? And, and you that would, again, give you that same dynamic, that monstrous dynamic. And I think, right, like it jump starts your offense a little bit because you've got a guy who's got a ton of experience coming in but is still incredibly young right like a guy that's going to be able to grow with Justin Fields he's 23 years old right now if you get him before that contract is kind of up right like you get him kind of okay maybe you you get a mid-contract dispute something like that right like he'd be a guy that I'm looking at and saying hey if they don't want to pay you um we'll pay you here and we'll pay you as a top wide receiver and on top of all of that uh we'll have to trade for you so we, we won't have any choice but to pay you as a top wide receiver and i it, i do like that ryan poles hasn't been afraid to go to the trade market right like he, he traded the second round pick for claypool he's gotten some nice pieces back he's covered I, I think the most interesting part is he hasn't just gotten rid of draft capital right he's covered his butt a lot with okay we're gonna make the roquan deal we're also going to get a second round pick back and then on top of that now we're going to trade our pick and get Claypool but we still got a second round pick we still got a second round pick here right so even if Claypool doesn't pan out to what we believe he could be which 
that would suck, right, that you lost a second-round pick. You still had a second-round pick in that draft based on what the Baltimore Ravens have done. So you're still able to um, – uh, I, I think Ryan Poles has been really good in in uh, making these draft deals and, and covering his butt on a lot of these draft deals. And so for me, right, like I would be confident in him going into this trade that the Bears wouldn't just be left devoid of talent for a guy like T. Higgins. Not to say that – um, I, I wouldn't give up draft capital for him. I don't think I'd give up draft capital this year in the draft for him. I think I would. I can't say that either. I can't say that. That's, it, that's a tough situation, right? I, I think then because of the because of the age and the ability and the talent, um, and this is, again, this is a long shot, right? But if the Bengals weren't willing to go out there and give him the money, maybe, well, I, I guess it's not that much of a long shot, right? Maybe because they feel like, hey, we got to still do a better job of project, protecting Joe Burrow, um, that you would go a little bit more with uh, maybe a, I guess, a third-round pick this season, this year, or, or a fourth-round pick this year, and a high pick next year, right? Give him a couple picks for him uh, and, and try to get T. Higgins back in that situation. Um, again, I'm not breaking the bank for a wide receiver. I think dynamic wide receivers are nice to have. I, I love that, and I, I love them, especially when they're young like T. Higgins is. But to me, right, like – there's still so many holes that this Bears team has. You can't just say, I'm going to go out there and just spend on a dynamic wide receiver, right? Like, I I, I wouldn't do that in this situation. I, I think that it does add to what Justin Fields uh, can be, but we see dynamic wide receivers come out all the time, right? Like, they're not to say they're a dime a dozen, they're not to the running back point yet, but we see dynamic wide receivers come out of the draft pretty consistently in today's day and age. And so I, I, I wouldn't be mad if the Chicago Bears uh, didn't go out and try and draft a guy that's already in the, or trade for a guy that's already in the league because you want to go after it and address it in the draft because you do have your full slate of picks there. Uh, and I would be okay going with a young guy at the wide receiver position because we're seeing that pan out a lot more, right? Christian Watson finally starting to develop this year. Um, you know what I'm like? Th there's a lot of the young guys, even this year in the draft, that, that, you're, that you're really seeing take steps in the right direction. And then, of course, Jamar Chase is the iconic one. Justin Jefferson, right? Like, those guys are the guys you see that come out and you're just like, oh, okay. Like, these guys are, are it. He made an immediate impact. He's that guy. Um, so hopefully, right, like, I, I want to see what the Bears are going to do to address it, man. Would love to hear how you guys feel on T. Higgins. Let me know in the comments below. I do have one other option, right? Because there is one other option here that, to me, is your Khalil Mack move for your current regime. Now, you don't give up as much as you gave up for Khalil Mack, right? You don't, you don't go out there and you're just throwing money at guys. You don't give up as much as you gave up for Khalil Mack. But I think that it could be a Khalil Mack-esque move for the Chicago Bears. And the name that I'm thinking of, some of you may already know, is DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins right now is in such a weird situation, such a weird situation over there in Arizona. I mean, he's coming in. He wasn't exactly in a great situation before, right? Started off the season suspended, but outside of that, comes back, ready to make plays, making plays, but still having a little bit of back and forth with Kyler Murray, right? I think the, the clip that always stands out to me is, is when he's just walking off the field and he looks at Kyler and he's like, what do you, what do you see? What, what are you looking at out there? Because you can't be looking at one of the best wide receivers over the last five years. I think that DeAndre Hopkins, to me, comes at a premium. You would have to pay a higher price for him, but you absolutely 110% know what you're getting for a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. And I think that that's the part that, that – that is a difference maker, right? Like in that situation, you know 110%, hey, I'm getting one of the best receivers in the NFL right off the bat. He didn't play most of the season. He's played in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games. He's got 663 yards and 56 receptions this season. He's already got three touchdowns. You know what I'm saying? Like, D hop to me is a guy that, and, and I say the Khalil Mack uh, uh, method because a guy that jump starts the process, 
right? Like, you go out there, he's 30 years old. He'll be 31 by the time the Bears would be able to acquire him, basically. Um, the situation in Arizona, like I said, is not great, right? Kyler Murray just went down with injury. Um, they could be firing Cliff Kingsbury out there. Um like, there's just so many issues that are happening out in Arizona that, that you look at and you're like, oh, man, this is going to be – especially, right, the fact that they signed on Kyler Murray to be there long term and there does seem to be a a bit of a, uh, a beef between him and pretty much his teammates um, every time we hear about something coming out of Arizona that – I think that D Hop would be a a good get for the Chicago Bears. I think he's a plausible get for the Chicago Bears. Y'all know that I have always said that he was a, a top two receiver in the NFL. And uh, when he had a quarterback that was willing to throw him the ball, he's not too. And I think here's the thing as well, right? Like on top of everything else, the one thing that I love about D Hop is the fact that how much he reminds me of Larry Fitzgerald, but like a more talented to me, Larry Fitzgerald, right? Because um, in a lot of ways, right, D Hop's not going to kill you with the speed. D Hop's not going to kill you with um, the the overall, right? Like, I'm just going to blow past you. And then one day he's going to lose that ability. D Hop is all about positioning. He's all about using his size and his leverage. He's all about his footwork, right? Those are things that translate to wide receivers that can play well into being 34, 35 years old, right? So I don't even think that you're a situation now where you go out there and you try to you try to uh, acquire a guy like DeAndre Hopkins where you feel like oh man this is a one two year deal right like and what is DeAndre Hopkins uh, uh contract right now let me let me pull that up because I know he's making the bag when he got it out in Arizona you know what I mean uh so right now D Hop is getting so next season right he would be getting. Is that facts? Hold on now. Ah, okay. There we go. All right. I had to I had to read it the right way. So in 2022, he's getting $4 million. In 2023, he'll be getting 19. In 2024, he'll be getting 14. 2025, he'll be an unrestricted free agent. You can do what you want with him at that point, right? And I think that he would still be talented enough to uh go at, I had to I had to double check that. I'm like, man, he's not making no money, but then I had to I had to see how the contract broke down. So for me, right, like I I'm I'm all in on a guy like D Hop to me, right? I I think that he's a guy that um, I, I look at and I say, yeah, that would jumpstart your offense greatly. Now, what would it cost, right? I don't know if I – I think you might actually be able to get away with not giving up picks in this year's draft. You might be able to go out there and get picks in next year's draft, the 2024 draft. I would give high draft capital in that situation because now you've had an opportunity in this draft to go out there and uh, 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 plug a lot of holes on this team, hopefully. Hopefully Ryan Poles has a really good job uh, – does a really good job. Um, uh, in, in plugging those holes and different things like that. And you we're looking into next season, n- not as, hey, can the Bears win five games? But we're looking into next season saying, hey, can the Bears go out there and win seven games? Can the Bears go out there and win nine games? Can the Bears be a playoff team next year? Because I think you feel like you have that level of talent with uh, – uh, um, with Justin Fields in the building. So now you add this wide receiver and you're hoping to go out there and possibly get one of the best options you can at uh, offensive line. I don't know if that's going to be through the draft. It could be via draft. It could be by assigning the bears are coming to this season with a ton of money. So I think that creates a ton of opportunity for you to plug a lot of holes. And I would love to have a guy like DeAndre Hopkins standing out there that Justin Fields can just trust. Right. And somebody that you, that you know, when you throw him the ball, like D hop, what's he got? Like, five drops in his entire career like he just doesn't drop the ball he's very much like Larry Fitzgerald in that sense so uh I I I love the fact that that to me we're even having a conversation about possibly him being available and I think that he might be made available because he is their best asset on that team and especially with Kyler Murray going down for this year they're going to want to try and get some pieces in there that they can build up and I'm gonna be honest with you I, I, even though they've paid him I still don't think they want Kyler Murray I still don't think they really believe in Kyler Murray I think they were just in such a bad position with Kyler Murray right it's like well we either sign him or we don't and 
he's not bad enough for us not to sign him. Like he's he's been really talented in this NFL. We just haven't gotten him to that next point. And so I think you're going to see the coaching change come in more than anything. But our, I mean, the dynamic out there never sounds good. Maybe that's just the culture. Maybe that's the coaching culture. But uh, what I, I would be all in on D Hop. I would love to see the Bears go after somebody like DeAndre Hopkins. Man, let me know how you guys feel in the comments below. Uh, I'll be down there talking with you as well. I Like I said, I would give up some high draft capital for D-Hop going into next season. I, I'd give up a 2024 first-round pick because I think that it will be lower. I think that the Bears will be moving in the right direction next year with a lot of the picks and a lot of the money. Now they got to hit, right? Like at the end of the day, Ryan Poles has to do his job the right way, and it's got to hit. But I'm hoping that the Bears are – more so in the 12 to 15 range next year in the draft uh, and not in the three to two range. <laughs> so uh, if, if you're going into it with that mindset, man, D-Hop is a great addition to that. Hey, I want to know how you guys feel, man. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down there talking with you as well. What do you think the Chicago Bears should do at the a wide receiver position moving forward. Uh, I mean, listen, there's there's so many options that really we didn't even lay out. But uh, it, let me know some of those options that you guys think of as well. As always, man, it's your boy, Pat the Designer. Back at it again to continue watching our Chicago Bears content. Click the links on the screen and check the links in the description below. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bird done. Peace.